Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Mobility Features. Today, we are at Bosch's plant in Bidhi near Bengaluru. You must be wondering why we are visiting this plant today. There are a couple of reasons. One, Bosch has shifted an assembly line from Elawa in Czechoslovakia to Bidhi and commissioned it everything done in about 54 days at record time. In spite of COVID challenges, logistics challenges, and also Ukraine-Russia war. Number two, this assembly line is going to produce the milestone 1 million production in a few months from now. Should we not check how the plant managed to overcome all these difficulties and manage to accomplish its own set goals? Come, let's get into the factory. Join me in exploring innovation at the BDD plant where history merges with modern technology. Since 1998, this factory has evolved from making the inline pump, which is a 96-year-old diesel product, to the Lambda sensors for two-wheelers. The CP4 IME pump, designed to deliver high pressure quantities in a common rail system, required a new setting. The pressure varies from 1600 bar to 2000 bar and with a robust drivetrain and oil lubrication, this innovative component boasts a lifetime of up to 3 lakh kilometers. The pump is used in light commercial vehicles, medium duty and passenger cars for BS6 application. When did Bosch India realize the need to localize CP4 IME injection and what prompted it to relocate the production line from Elawa to Bidadi? CP4 IME is majorly for Indian market. This pump was designed at Ilava in Czech Republic. The volumes increased in Indian market so that we decided in the year 21 to localize. It was a challenging task for the teams in Bidadi and Ilava together, who really had an excellent work in the planning phase and in the relocation phase, where the relocation itself happened in almost two months. Despite the challenging geopolitical scenarios which happened like the russian ukraine conflict and the second wave of the pandemic, along with concerns around custom clearance, safety clearance and so on, the teams made an excellent job to help to make the securing reliable partners and timely support from all key authorities. The inventory we could reduce here up to 50%. Of course, we could also give to our customers a competitive price here in the market. The swift response to the customer demands on any change request and quality issues was faster. The quality inspection, for example, was at the beginning done in Dilava and now it's done in Bidari. After the relocation, our primary job was to ensure stability and operational efficiency in our production processes. With sheer dedication, the Bidadi team was able to match the benchmark levels in efficiency compared with the lava plant within just 30 days. Bidadi now has a CP4 IME production capacity of up to 600,000 annually. Today, the Bidadi plant stands as a testament to adaptability and progress with a workforce of over 3,500 people working on site, contributing to a diverse portfolio of products from conventional pumps to common rail injection systems, including the recent additions like CP4 IME pump. This facility caters to the evolving needs of both traditional and emerging technologies. Let us see what products are manufactured at this plant and who are the customers. Uh, the products what we manufacture broadly can be classified into three. The first one is conventional products, where we manufacture something called inline pumps, mainly for tractor segment, single cylinder pumps, uh, also for stationary engines, etc. And the components related to that comes in called uh, elements and delivery valves. Then we have common rail systems. Basically for BS6 applications, we have uh, pumps called CP4, CBX, CP4 IME, uh, rail, common rail, and uh, fuel control unit. These are the main products under uh, common rail system. For two-wheeler segment, we have something called Lambda sensor. It's a basically an oxygen sensor. So these are the broad uh, products that we manufacture in this plant. And customers? Uh, customers are mainly like, you know, 
off off road customers mm. like tractors as i said mm. uh, passenger vehicles mm. uh, light commercial vehicles heavy commercial vehicles and two wheelers the relocation process of cp4 ime pump was a testament to exceptional teamwork and expertise from decommissioning in elava to swift installation and commissioning in bedidi the transition was completed within a remarkable 54 day time frame it is like a pit stop for formula racing now with a production capacity of around 6 lakhs pieces annually the bidaidi plant serves major oems in the country well what were the challenges in shifting the plant as it could be tough to accommodate a line from elsewhere to a new location so any product when we shift or any manufacturing line we shift from one plant to another uh, if you have alternate line then it is much simpler but in this case uh, cp4 ime we had only one line manufacturing in elava and it is already in supply to the customer okay. so if i have to remove that line we will have to build the inventory first so how long you build inventory uh, that should uh, suffice for the period for which we need uh, the time recommendation by commissioning the line so therefore we wanted to compress the time as much as possible so an extensive plan was done so first we had to build the inventory mm. uh, mind you because the demands also can vary at that time yeah, absolutely so we build that inventory then we decommission the line from there brought it here and installed here all this took only 54 days okay and uh, we were just in time so that you know the inventory was still available okay. and we were not in any risk to the customer because we have to look at customer first see the one of the biggest uh, topic when we shift a line is the logistics it requires a huge amount of planning both at the location from where we bring and also the location where we get it we have a very good logistics team also supported by we have something called our own shared services called gs global services who manages this uh, country to country logistics so extensive planning almost 12 containers were uh, airlifted at a time mm. and generally it's a very difficult because you may not get it breathing in one uh, shot one shot but we were uh, able to do this because of a good planning and by the time the uh, machines arrived in india we already had kept everything ready documentation customs clearance everything was ready so the whole time taken for transit plus few days for the clearances and bringing it line everything worked like a clockwork so it's a basically a meticulous planning which matters while shifting the line from you no know, one place to the other i'm sure you would have taken lot of initiatives to enhance the productivity if you can tell us about it see basically all our lines actually are designed to uh, for optimal uh, usage and they are also executed the same way this line from ilava also was designed for a optimal usage and optimal uh, uh, executed for the optimal efficiency so the first task for us was to ensure that whatever cycle times we had at ilava is also implemented in a uh, bidti plant within a span of 1 month because we had to ramp up the li- these lines mm-hmm. so this was the first task for for us which we completed within 1 month the second task for for us was to ensure that we have a stability in the production and ensure that the customer li- customer is not affected and this was the second uh, phase where the team from bidti did an excellent job in ensuring this to happen the third phase is actually looking at improvements so for i can give one example here Uh, in our test bench we uh, using our digital initiative we ens- we saw that there is an op- opportunity for us to reduce the cycle time and optimize it for our uh, uh, productivity so this we have done and our team using their own competence has been able to do this quite successfully how does the company support oems in enhancing the efficiency of today's internal combustion engines and also address market volatility the efficiency of the product generally this is taken care by our uh, r&d uh, not not getting into too much of technical uh, there are two very important things one is uh, fuel efficiency mm. when in a common rail product and the emission mm. these are the two factors so as the pressure increases the fuel uh, spray efficiency will increase that will increase the fuel efficiency of the yeah. product and uh, it will also reduce the emission so these are the main factors in a common rail pump for uh, improving the efficiency say the backbone of our manufacturing is bps that is bosch production system 
volatility means basically you know the changes in the market this is absorbed at two places one is in our own manufacturing so we will have supermarkets say very close to the customers we have our warehouses so we build certain inventory this has a very scientific way of calculating mm. based on the past history the future demands and all this mm. so this is takes care of the product delivery to the customer but if the volatility is high that means my input parts also should get protected or the message should be getting it in right time for that we have a supermarkets at supplier place okay so they also maintain a certain level of inventory so any volatility within this uh, defined stocks we will not get affected we will be able to deliver okay. so that's the whole principle under which our wash production system works and that is the essential element of managing our volatility let us take a tour of the plant the ergonomics requirements at the elavia plant would have differed from what is required in india and there could be several issues like this how did the company overcome these challenges so this university have taken a lot of initiatives to uh, set up the plant because the ergonomics levels of uh, the plant in jelova we completely different you can tell me a little bit about the you know initiatives that you have taken yeah you're right see bosch gives a lot of importance for ergonomics and the ergonomic standards are uh, across bosch it's a common one so in this case for example uh, for example ilava plant to bidhi plant we had an advantage this line was designed for uh, using both boys and girls on the line so the when we brought it here we are also using it with boys and girls so that is the advantage it was designed for gender neutral and we were able to use our our uh, boys and girls with the same without many modifications but one at one uh, point, point we had to do was the space constraint was actually one of the things we had to fit the machines and assembly line within the space that was available so we had to make minor changes to ensure that it fits into the area that was available with us i think with that we are still ensured that the material flow and other things are not affected actually what are the special initiatives taken on the shop floor to reduce rejections rework and enhanced productivity see some of the things that uh, we uh, generally do in the plant is uh, we use our system sub cycle to actually look at what improvements have to be done on the line uh, we run it every 2 months as a sprint so every 2 months uh, we have a different uh, project that is run so beginning of the year the uh, all the team members all the engineers from cross functional they meet they identify what should be the projects that has to be done for the entire year and then they bifurcate them into two month cycle so these two month cycle projects are taken for quality improvement productivity improvement and also to ensure that the safety and other aspects are taken care in this uh, line uh, here in this line for example um, if i have to talk about one example we were using our digital uh, uh, topics we were we could identify that in one of our test bench there was an opportunity for us to reduce a few seconds because we found that the, when we did the uh, deep dive analysis using the digital tools we found that there is some inconsistency where we could actually uh, improve our uh, efficiency so this our team was able to do it with the kind of competence that they had and they, we got the benefit of it the cycle time also got reduced in this uh, in this line okay and about the supply and coming to the uh, localization this is another topic that is very important see customer has to uh, clear us whenever we do any localization in this line our customers when we moved from ilava to bidadi plant we first ensured that we carry forward the same uh, suppliers who were there for uh, these products then later on we localized around 20% of the components and now in this year mid of this year we will be completing almost 60% of the components will be localized so with this i think we would have done a good amount of uh, efficiency there because supply chain efficiency is also very important for us right but the journey doesn't end here with a focus on stability and continuous improvement the plant is committed to enhancing productivity through localization and digitalization initiatives let us hear bosch's local to local approach and what is in store next at bosch our localization efforts are consolidated and carried out in a phased manner we typically start is relatively low levels of localization around 30% when it comes to introducing new technologies in case of bs4 products 
we have achieved an extensive population level around 70 to 75 percent. Currently, our overall average localization stands at approximately 50 percent across all business areas. This includes specific areas where we have surpassed 85 to 90 percent localization and newer technologies as well where the rate of localization is low. However, these percentages continually increase as the technology evolves and adoption expands. At Bosch, we are committed to continually enhance localization across all components and shall continue to focus on the same as a core business objective. See, actually, here there are two things that we should uh, remember. One is mm, these are flexible lines that we have, mm, and we can, uh, based on our technical capacity and the customer requirement, mm. we can either scale up or scale down the number of people that operate within the line. Uh, based on that, we, we actually meet the customer requirement. Okay. If our technical capacity is already met and we okay. need to go beyond that, mm. then we look at uh, improving the cycle time of the line mm. so that we get more out of the these missions. Mm. Our principle is to sweat these missions before we make any investments. This has been the principle that we have followed. Okay, great. Uh, what about the digitalization and IoT? How do you leverage those capabilities? Yeah, it's, it's a very good uh, point actually. In this plant, in the last uh, uh, three, four years, we have been focused on digital topics and this has been one of our uh, uh, forte. And uh, on this line, for example, our, our own products, if you see, they have QR code for identification, their traceability. And these uh, QR codes are actually scanned on all the machines. And these are actually used for capturing the data, for process data, as well as the testing data from these machines. If, for example, we have any end of line rejection or we have some customer uh, defect, then we are able to trace back which, who, which operator has done, which line we have done it, and which station, what parameters were there. So this is one advantage. All our new machines have been connected to our MES and MES platform. The old machines which we have, we have used a device bridge to connect it. Okay. So in this plant, almost 80% of our machines are connected and we are using this to the advantage of traceability and process improvements. Great, interesting. As the plant prepares to celebrate the milestone of 1 million productions of CP4 IMA pump, the Bidati plant continues to lead the way in innovation, setting new standards for excellence in manufacturing. Sustainability lies at the core of its operations at Vidadi plant of Bosch. The company launched Project Vasundra, focusing on zero accidents, zero waste to landfill, CO2 neutrality and water neutrality. Since 2020, the plant has been CO2 neutral and it aims to achieve water neutrality by 2025 through several initiatives including rainwater harvesting, that boast a storage capacity of 10 million liters. Stay tuned for more features on manufacturing.